Hello friends and welcome to this week's video. My name is Joyce. This is Rethrive Living. The whole thrust of this channel is talking to you about the things that have helped me to thrive in my life or to rethrive, to reach a point where I do something, maybe do it well, hit a season that life is challenging and difficult, and then I have to learn to thrive all over again. And that is the reason we have the name Rethrive. But this video today is really not a discussion format, but this is a video about how I do my makeup. And I know you might be saying, why you? There are a million other women on here doing this, and that is very true. I am just one ordinary woman, but I want to share my tutorial with you, especially featuring how I do my eyes, because I am in a group of women that we need help. <laughs> Let's face it, here's this face. There's no makeup on this face today. You are seeing the real and the raw. And I'm not somebody that I would consider to be this naturally beautiful woman. And I need all the help that I can get. But I represent a group of women who maybe have dealt with a lack of confidence. I can speak to those women. I have worked really hard on that issue. And the confidence for me has come from the outside in and partly from the inside out. I think it's a street that is continually flowing in both directions. And by that, I mean that if I look beautiful on the outside, it does help my inside feel better. If I feel beautiful on the inside, it helps my outside feel better. So one is not complete without the other. So today I am going to do a full face of makeup, but I am going to talk to you in particular about how I do my eyes. And I hope that you find this video helpful. If you have never applied your foundation with a brush, I highly recommend it. It is very therapeutic. It feels so good. The next thing that I'm going to do is to kind of prep my eyelids a little bit. And I like a little bit of concealer because it brightens that space. So we're gonna do that next. And again, I will fast forward through all of these. Okay, so this is the fun part of the video that I really wanted to show you. I have issues with downturned eyes, and as I've aged, I've noticed that my eyes tend to feel like they're drooping a little more right here. I have the puffiness in the hood, so kind of we're losing that real estate. So we have to create the illusion that we have a nice crease and the way we do that is with darker colors and um, to make this area recede and to make this part of your eyes pop and stand out and come forward. So today I'm going to use my Morphe Pretty in Peach palette. The first thing to do is I go in with one of my lighter colors and I'm intentionally just tapping this in you can choose whatever light color you want. And don't take this color up past where your natural crease would be, okay? And focus on the center to the outer edge of your eye, okay? Sometimes you have to tap, sometimes you have to swipe, you do whatever works. Go a little, need a little bit more on this one. Okay. 
Then I'm gonna go in with a slightly darker color right here. And I'm using the same brush and we're gonna go into the crease and slightly above and then we're gonna make like a V right here. So it's kind of like a, a arch right here and a V. And then we'll blend this out. Do not take this dark color down low, but you want to go where your crease would be. I just open my eye a little wider. You wanna go where your crease would be and slightly above. And then I do a little angled sweep at the corner, okay? And then we'll blend this out a little bit more. And we'll do the same on the other eye. Open your eye fairly wide. Sometimes I close it. If you need to close your eye, you can. Sometimes I leave them open, just depends. But I try to raise my eyebrows so that I've, I can really see where this color needs to go, okay? I'm gonna blend this just a little bit more. I'm gonna come in here so you can see what I'm doing. Blend this out, we don't want any harsh lines. Okay, now there's a third thing that I do then. So, I'm paying attention to having this kind of winged effect out here at the outer edge of the eye. I add a third color, which is this dark color, not a lot, very little, and I go right into this crease because this creates a really nice deep shadow. You can see what that does, it's just really nice. It creates the illusion that you do have a nice crease there, even though the crease is disappearing and shrinking. Sometimes like our waistlines, right? <laughs> That's a whole nother discussion. So we'll blend this out. Just keep this in the crease. I'll take my blending brush and we will blend this just a little bit more. Okay, don't worry about what's here and here because we are going to clean this up. Okay. All right, that looks good so far. All right, the next thing that we are going to focus on is now cleaning up that corner and then we will move on to eyebrows and mascara at the very end. Okay, I take a little angled brush. This is a color correcting palette by NYX. And I use this lighter yellow color, sometimes blend it with some of the peachy color. And we're gonna sweep some of this at the corner. And what we're gonna do is create an angled line from the corner of the eye up to the corner of the eyebrow. Okay, so we've lightened here and lightened here. So now we're just gonna blend this. You can tap with your finger to blend. A 
always helps to open your mouth wider. You ever notice that? <laughs> I don't know why we do that, but we do. All right, so. So we have created this nice sweeping effect which creates a lift and that's what we're going for this creating this lift so the eyes instead of turning downward we are giving the illusion that the eyes now lift at the corner and that is the whole purpose of this tutorial is to show you how i create that we've created the shadow here we're creating lift here all right and that achieves a really nice result. The next step then is to go on, and we're gonna do the eyebrows. This is NYX. I have to put my glasses on. NYX. Lift and Snatch Ash Brown brow tint pen looks like this almost like a little marker fine point marker And a little reminder is that your eyebrows are not twins, but sisters. So they may not look exactly the same. Um, and that is okay. We need a little bit more right here at the corner, I think, right there. Just a little bit more right here. Okay, so we have filled in the brows. They look pretty good. Again, you won't have matching brows exactly. You will have sister brows. All right, I'm gonna go on and do the rest of my face and then we'll come back and show you the final look, okay? This is NYX Nude Pink. I lined slightly outside my lip, not anything outlandish or elaborate. I'm going to finish doing that and then I'm going to tell you about my lip and cheek color. Okay, so I've outlined my lips and filled in just a little bit uh, and then I will go on to um, this nice lip color, which is actually not just a lip color, but it's also for my cheeks. So we're gonna do both of these. This is two in one. This is by Morphe, it's number color number two, Perk Up Lip and Cheek Color. This is fantastic because you can use it for your cheeks and use it for your lips. And I discovered this yesterday. <laughs> Such a great little surprise. Now, obviously you'd say, didn't you read the thing? I didn't read the label on it until yesterday. And I've used this for months and I love it. Such a soft, creamy color. They say cream colored, not cream colored. They say creamy makeup is great for mature skin. And I think that is very true. I don't use everything that's cream.
So it works as a lip and cheek color and I think it's fantastic. I love it. All right, so if you think you need any adjusting to the eyeshadow, right here in particular is the area that can sometimes feel like it gets a little lost. You can add a dab of color right there, bringing that color right up Okay, I think that's a good little addition, making sure that the corners stay nice and clean. And if you have any fallout, just add again a little concealer there and whisk it up, keeping that nice little lift to the corners. If you feel your line is a little too harsh, just sweep with your finger, soften that line still have that lift effect going on, but you don't want too harsh of a line. So I think this is good. I think it's amazing. Oh, I forgot one final step before we do mascara. My Wet n Wild highlighting powder step. I have abused this thing. It's lost its lid and everything, but it still works. Okay. And highlight the nose and then I'm going to show you a little trick I do. Highlight the nose, cheekbones, okay and then I take a little bit, this is why I do this before I do my mascara. I go right to the center of my eyelid and we tap some of this on and sweep it because this really makes your eyeshadow pop. And what we're doing is, again, we're creating lift, illuminating this part, and having the crease be recessed, or we're faking that we have a really nice crease. You see what that does? Isn't that a great step? I love that. So it's just a very light color. It's soft, iridescent pink. You could do that with a lot of different colors. It really doesn't matter. As long as it's very light, you can just illuminate and then, all right. And then it creates this just great, nice glowy, bright look on your lids. Okay, so last step is mascara. This is Tarte Lash Paint I use I'll show you the bottle. I use a lot of Tarte mascara over the years and I really like, I've tried other mascaras. Theirs is my favorite. Okay, for me, I focus mainly on my upper lashes. I very seldom do any below because the effect of mascara on the lower lashes only makes my eyes look more droopy. So focus on your outer lashes okay middle to the outer edge of your lashes so again we're focusing on creating this sweeping look without adding falsies of course nothing wrong with those i haven't tried them yet Okay, so that's the final look. I think it's really great, the power of makeup. If you can go back to the beginning of this and see the before, makeup is so transformational. It just makes you feel good. When you get up in the morning and you do your face and you do your hair and you look good on the outside, it really does help your inside to feel better. Okay. No look for me is complete without wearing some of my guitar string jewelry. So I have these pretty little coppery hoops. These are phosphorus bronze is the color. 
They look like rose gold. I love this color, it's so great for fall, but I wear this color all year long. It's just such a pretty color. Guitar strings are great. They are strong and they represent durability. Um, if you don't know the story, you can go check out my website and I will scroll it across the screen here and there will be also a link in the description box. But 13 and a half years ago, my husband came to me with guitar strings and said, I've been thinking about this. What can we do with these? I envision jewelry. He was a guitar teacher and a voice teacher. I taught piano. So music has been a part of our lives for, for forever actually. And I grew up playing and so did he. And so it was just a natural outcropping of our lives. And I thought it was the silliest idea. I really, really did. And what I did not realize is when this idea came, what a gift it was going to be to us. He had lost so many jobs in the first years that we were married. And when we started doing music, it helped stop the cycle of job loss. And had we never made that shift into teaching music, we would have never designed or come up with this guitar string jewelry business. And it's been a great blessing. One of my reasons for launching this channel is to share my business with you because you're another audience and I I need to reach new audiences, but I also wanna grow in other ways. And um, so this is my outreach program, so to speak. This is my way to talk to you about the things that are really important to me. And our business is very important to me, but the overarching story is the story of the mental health conversation. And he is a survivor. And what a beautiful blessing this has been, even though he's had this traumatic thing that he has dealt with for 34, 35 years. Uh, well, he's dealt with it since the age of 17 and he's going to be 62 in February. So that's a long time. And I applaud his courage. I applaud his ability to stick around and to stay when life is hard. Um, I have been his greatest cheerleader, not always, but I have learned to become his cheerleader and I really believe in him and who he is and who he is as a person and what he offers me as an individual. But this jewelry was birthed out of his mind and it's just become our way to encourage the mental health conversation. We have also launched a podcast and we have only put one podcast up Then we ran into some glitches with some of our recordings and we have to redo some of them. But that will be launching probably the beginning of October, our second episode. Um, we have a lot going on right now. And so this is a very busy time, but this is such a great thing, just being able to be present and to have this conversation with you whoever you are, wherever you are from, whatever you're going through, I want you to know, I believe our story offers you hope. I believe our story shows you resilience and I believe it shows you how to thrive when life is very challenging and very difficult. We've had so many seasons of struggle and challenge, but we are still here, we are still going forward and we refuse to quit. So you're a part of our lives now. You're a part of our story by listening and sharing and participating. I will I will put a link in the description box if you want to go check out our jewelry. That would be fantastic. And um, I just want to say thank you for being here today. Thank you for listening. I hope that this tutorial was helpful, but even more, I hope that this little bit of conversation was encouraging for you. And so thank you again, and I will see you next video. Bye-bye.